Hey everyone, you're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey guys, I'm so I'm I'm heavy, but I'm happy to be here and thanks so much for for joining us tonight. Um Are we live? Yes, we are. Yes, we're live. We are live on digitalstreamradio.com forward slash live stream. I just like saying it that way. (laughs) That's fine. I mean, and it works. And for those of you who, uh, you know, find the forward slash live stream a little too much to say, because, you know, she's got to get that juicy mouth going. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, you just go to Digital Stream Radio and click on the Listen Live tab. We, We were having some issues. And um, I was troubleshooting, which is why we started recording at 8.15 p.m. today. Yeah, it's a little late for us, so, even um, us. Yeah, and and so we got it working, everything is up and going, and Candace is now all yours. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> uh, I, was try- I was trying to decide how I was going to, uh, like, uh, is it intro, intro in? Because I just feel, I just feel, like, I don't want to bring you down, because we just started, but I... And I and I said last week that I didn't want to talk about Donald Trump and his bullshit and and what he's doing to families and children uh, at the border right now. But over the last couple of days, I just realized that you can't you can't, you can't be worth it. yeah you can't escape it and you can't be worth your weight in anything if you just like sit by and you don't say anything even if only five people hear this even if if nobody hears it like you can't pretend to have a voice and not and not use it when it really matters so that is truth so it's just um so it was weighing heavy on my heart to make sure that i is something wrong Oh no no! no. Oh. I was just simply going to okay. say. So if you don't, if you didn't want to start it off with such a Debbie Downer. Oh no no no! So anyway, that I'm not I'm not going to start that way. I'm going to start as usual with how are the boys. I just couldn't I I couldn't pretend when I started like you know hey you know like it's, I and it's and it's important because I know that you you come here I come here as a relief and as a distraction from the world. Is that's why I do the show. That's why I'm here. And so I always want to bring that to you. But I oh I also want to remind myself and you who are listening that you know life is real and that's the whole that's the whole point like the other point of my show is that like nothing is perfect I don't have a Pinterest life I'm not a Pinterest mom I try and I fail constantly and and so like sometimes some heavy shit has to be talked about let me ask tonight is the night (laughs) you're 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 you constantly try and fail at Pinterest or at being a mom both of them no, I think you're an amazing mother. Thank you. I appreciate that. But it's just a, it's just being a mom is just a series of failures and, and recoveries. But you I guess know, basically what being a mom is. But I, I will tell you this though. I, you're like very, trip you, and fall. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you're very dedicated in what you do. And you know what? And when you, you screw it up or when you feel that you've done something wrong, you talk about it and you, you play it out in your head and, and you, Throw it out there to the world, to your listeners, and and that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing, yeah. right? Because you're supposed to be question reflective. everything that you do, reflect on it, and and then try a different way, right? Right. And it's what worries me is mothers who don't do that. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's true. So, but I think you're a great mother. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, you're welcome. You're a great friend, Tom. I try. Oh God. <laughs> um. So, well, let's just jump right into how are the boys because it's very relevant to everything that you just said. Um. So the boys are great. Like I'll just start off by saying that they're great. Uh. Um. Let's see who Emery. Emery is teething. I think he's teething. And what's tough with teething is that it has all the signs of like sickness, like flu. Mm-hmm. It's all flu, fever, um, <sighs> vomiting, um, just kind of like, um, distant. You know, they're just pain, just all of the, all of the things that, that look like the flu, which makes it really scary because especially in the flu season, you're, you're just not sure, you know, and there's some kids who've ended up with like walking pneumonia because their parents thought it was teething, but it was actually really serious. So anyway, thankfully it's summertime, so it's likely not the flu, but, um, yeah, he's, he's just not himself and it's, it's so, it's so cool to be able to tell when he's not himself, 
He's only two, but he has his own personality, and and I can tell when it's off. So, and you know, and, and as a mother, I mean, obviously, you know your children. Right. You know, you know when things are not right, or mm-hmm. when they're not acting mm-hmm. at their, you know, when they're not behaving at their one hundred percent. You know? know, yeah. He woke up from a nap the other day, um, having thrown up on his pillow, and he usually takes these really long, th- almost three hour naps, and he only slept for forty five minutes. And what I don't know because he was sleeping in his bed is if he threw up in his sleep. And then woke up or if he woke up and threw up and then called me. But it was so <laughs> I'm finding with him that he's he's actually a little bit neat, even though he's wild and he throws food like he only threw up on the pillow, like on the pillowcase. There was it wasn't like everywhere on his arm, on his chest. Like it wasn't it wasn't messy. It felt like in college when you've mastered the barf at the end of the night or like the barf midnight, which is how you keep going. You're just uh-huh. like, I just got to get it out. I got to get it out. And you like hold your hair back and you're just like, ah, and you get it out and then you carry on with your night. Yeah, you rinse your mouth out <laughs> you and keep going. out, chew some gum. Like it was so perfect and contained. I was like, who are you? Oh. It's it's just more, it's, it's more evidence for me that that dude's been here before and he's just suffering through childhood again. Um, so yeah, he, he threw up and then he called for me and then I picked him up and it was really just in one place. And, um, so he was a little off because he'd only slept for a little bit of time. And that was, I don't know if that was yesterday or the day before, but he hasn't quite recovered. And then I noticed the canine tooth coming out. Uh. So I think, I think it's that. And it's weird because you don't see it till you see it. You know, I never see them when they're buds. I just... So, um, I I don't know if this is true, but you know, for teething babies, my grandmother used to r- rub rum rum yeah on their gums. But I have heard that if you get cloves, yeah, I have the clove the clove essential oil. Um, you could do the oil, or you can actually buy the cloves in a little pack and boil it in water, and then mm. you sort of kind of just. Rub that on their gums. I heard that that helps greatly. And you can get them like a lot of like the Spanish markets or the ethnic markets. Yeah. We'll have them in little packets. They sell like cinnamon, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you see them on the end caps. Yep. Just pick up a little packet and boil it in water and just rub it on their gums. And then you b- rub the water on their gums? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. I have Because I mean, you're the... not going to shove like a piece of clove right, well, in their mouth. Because that's probably the gonna... spiky thing, right? Yeah. He's yeah. Probably... It almost looks like, you know the jacks, the, the jacks that yeah. you used to play with? Mm-hmm. With the little ball in the jacks, mm-hmm. you throw them out and you try to pick or them Or those up. Uh, spurs, those things that you get yeah. in the in the woods. You know, uh, like you, they end up in your clothes and you're trying to pull them out? Yeah. Yeah, I know what they are. So there's also an essential oil that uh, I have been using on a Q-tip and you dilute it with some... Co- you have to dilute it with something. So I've been diluting it with coconut oil and then I just take that and rub it on his gum. So it's the same concept, just saves me a little bit of time of the... You know, that's the but, old school. But, but the other the thing, the other benefit to that too is when you boil that, oh my God, your house smells so oh, good. Oh, that's true. It does. It's like boiling cinnamon. You Double. know, like when I cook something heavy and pungent, I boil, I take cinnamon powder or oh. cinnamon sticks and boil it and it just gets rid of the smell. Oh, that's awesome. It's amazing. That's awesome. Oh my God. That should have yeah, been your hashtag mom been. so hard should have been. And I don't even know what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we'll make it work. We have 45 minutes to figure it out. Uh, so yeah, he is, Emery's, Emery's, Emery is powering through. <clears throat> Lincoln, 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 Lincoln. So, yes. Okay, so today Lincoln and I were hanging out and oh, the three of us were outside in the yard and I was watering the plants and he was running back and forth through the hose. So he stopped and he was laughing and he was standing in the sun and so I just sprayed him a little bit and he laughed and then I sprayed him again and he started screaming but he's been screaming at me, not like screaming in pain. And so I said, stop screaming. Why are you screaming? And he just kept screaming. And so I sprayed him again. And then we got into this, a bit of a power struggle over, over the water and the spraying and the screaming and all of the stuff. So eventually I was like, listen, we're not doing, I don't want to do this anymore. Cause it was funny, but I, it doesn't feel funny anymore. So stop screaming. And he insisted on keeping screaming. So I told him to go inside and he screamed at me. No, like screamed. And I was just like, listen, we're not doing this. So I was like, you're not going to go inside. I'm going to go inside. And I went inside and I closed the door and we have a porch. So you come from the outside, the backyard into the porch and then through a door into the kitchen. So I took Emery very calmly 
and I went into the kitchen and he came running behind me. Now he wants, cause he knows I'm going to leave him outside. Now he wants to come inside and I closed the door and I locked the door click and he lost it. And I was just like, dude, you can't be in here screaming at me. You're not the boss of me. And no, but daddy doesn't scream at me. Emery doesn't scream at me without getting in trouble. Like nobody is going to be in this house screaming at me, least of all you. So pull yourself together. And he was just screaming. So I took the baby inside. I changed his diaper. I went upstairs and got dry clothes because Lincoln's clothes were wet. So like, I'm not a monster. Like I'm, I'm going to let him in. I'm going to dry him off. It's going to be fine, but he's got to pull himself together. And so he's just screaming and he's banging on the door. And so for a split second, I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm traumatized. He's going to be traumatized. And, and I'm thinking about all the stuff that's going on now. It's just like, oh my God, he sounded just like those recordings that they're playing of, of children. And, but I was just like, but he's also tricksy. And I know that he does things except like he knows how to be excessive in order to get his way. And so I dug in and I just left him out there for it was probably three minutes. Right. But it probably felt like an eternity. And then we had to have I opened the door. I said, are you ready to talk? And he said, yeah. And so we were talking and it turns out that when I when I sprayed him with the water, it went in his eye. Mm. And so it hurt him. And I was like, well, why didn't you just say to me it went in my eye? you instead started screaming at me like you're a grown up and we're friends. <laughs> and he was like, well, it went in my eye and I didn't, you didn't stop. And blah, blah. So I was like, listen, we can have a conversation about this and I can say sorry for that, but still you can't scream at me. And so he started screaming again. And I was like, oh, do you still need a time to think about this? Cause you could stay here on the porch for a couple more minutes. If, Clearly, you still need some time. So you were having like, this no. conversation on the porch. Yeah, we have a con- this, and this is exactly how we were talking. And he was like, "No, I don't need any more time." And so then I started giving him the the fresh clothes. I was like, "Here, let's put on some clean clothes." Like, I'm not mad at you, and I still love you, but you can't scream at me, and you're not going to come into this house until you stop screaming. So it was a little bit of a of a moment I was trying to get him. I was like, hey, what just happened? You replay for me what happened. And that's how I heard the part about the water in his eye. And it's also how I try to make sure that he understands what's happening or what has happened so that it's not just me talking, 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 right? There's a thing you remember 95% of what you said and only 5% of what the other people say. So try him to get him to say the things I want him to say. So eventually we recovered and he came inside and then he was <laughs> <laughs> like a wounded animal. I was like, listen, no, I didn't hit you. I could have beat you. I didn't beat you for screaming at me out of you, out of character, crazy in the streets like this, neighbors listening and all kinds of shit. Like I could have beat you. I didn't beat you. Stop, stop sucking in your lip. Like, like I beat you because I didn't beat <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, thing. I couldn't handle it. So then he came inside and we had a snack and and then we went and we watched Power Rangers was a whole nother Power Rangers Dino Charge. I don't even want to go there. It'll take me on a whole different tangent. I, I used to watch Power Rangers. I just haven't seen the that. regular Power Rangers. Yes. The yes. last thing I saw about Power Rangers was the most recent movie they released yeah, like a year yeah. and a half ago. Where the Pink That's... Ranger was the mom. I saw it. Really? Sorry. That one? Yeah. So the original pink ranger i forget her name she's got like three names i think um she plays the mom of the yellow ranger i think or maybe it's the pink ranger it would make sense if it was the pink ranger hmm. but anyway she plays the mom which is kind of a cool throwback but there have been like 27 different power rangers since 1996 oh, when it started or whatever mercy. so lincoln is watching a power rangers called dino charge and i tell you i watch this thing and i laugh in, inside i try not to laugh out loud because him and emery are into it like emery sits on the couch he does the little da, 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 right and the moves and all the things and he's <laughs> dancing and i was like oh my god i'm doing it wrong because he's two years old and he's singing the the power ranger song and so i don't want to make them feel bad for liking this thing that's super duper corny but i just keep thinking as much time as they take to dino charge but a duh, energizer oh duh, and all the moves like why aren't the bad guys just punching them in the neck right like <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes <laughs> I, I remember in in our version of the show it was just, it was just like go go power right. rangers and that was it boom oh my god they're there's already fighting. so much there's so much, oh much involved now 
<laughs> but anyway, the point is that the three of us, we sat on the couch and we watched a couple episodes of Power Rangers and he was sitting next to me and we were like cuddling. And then I made sure. So I made sure at the beginning to say I was sorry about the, the eye thing. I didn't know. You're still wrong, but I'm sorry. And then probably <laughs> half an hour in, I stopped him again. And I was like, hey, I just want to make sure you know that I would never do anything to hurt you. And I didn't know that that happened. So I'm really sorry. I love you. I don't want to fight you. I don't want you to be mad at me. I don't want to be mad at you. Let's hug it out. We hugged it out again. And then we just sat on the, the couch and watched until Did you <laughs> until reiterate? James. You don't yell at mommy? Yeah, of course I did. <clears throat> I wouldn't expect of anything less of you. I mean, I don't want to yell at you, but you don't yell at me. You don't no. yell at me, I won't yell at you. So it's like, let's make a deal. You don't yell at me, I won't yell at you. You listen to me, I'll listen to you. I don't know if that's going to come back to bite me later. <laughs> <laughs> that's when they like decide, Mommy, I don't want to listen to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I was into it today as the deal. So it was, um, it, it was just one of those things where I, I'm not sure that locking him on the porch was the right thing to do but in the moment it was better than yoking him up well sometimes you know <laughs> you just need a timeout i mean I did. They, people speak of timeouts yep you decided to I do need- it on the opposite side of the door <laughs> some people just use the corner so i mean potato yeah, potato i know <laughs> i know it felt it felt like a timeout for me too like the door was locked so I couldn't get to him. You know, he feels like he couldn't get to me, but I also felt like, good thing I can't get to you right now. And I took my time and I could see him. The thing I kept thinking is what I wasn't certain of was if he was going to leave the porch to go around the front door and try to bang on the front, on the front door, which would put him, he's still on our, he doesn't have to like, he'd still be on our driveway and just come up our stairs, but I didn't want him on the street side banging and screaming and screaming on the street side that would have been bad so but, but he, he didn't, didn't do it but he didn't do it and i was in the kitchen sort of monitoring the situation i would have heard if the screen door open and all of the things so i was i was trying to do my best in the moment and i i, I don't i still don't know if i'm happy with it but i i am happy with the the check-in that I did like two or three times to make sure that we were, we were good and we're good. We're going to be fine. He ran to come and give me a hug when I left for the show tonight. So we're like back to normal. Aww. But he did say when James got home, he said, Oh, Lincoln, go and get the, I think James was sending him to go watch a show or something. And he came into the living room and I had like sprawled out on the couch and he walks back in the kitchen and he's like, mommy is guarding the remote. And if I ask to get the remote, she's going to say no. It's like, listen, don't be so dramatic. And of course, so you know, dramatic. does dad, so does dad sort of kind of, um, give in to his, uh, mostly, mostly, I would say mostly he has, he has his moment. I actually have to laugh at it sometimes because I can hear when he's lost it. He, he also plays the, like I told him today, I was like, you might as well come home today with some popcorn and some chicken and some ice cream and, and be the, the good parent, like be the fun savior parent because we had a hard day and somebody's got to do it. So you might as, you can take it today. I'll let you take it today. <laughs> but like he, he, he plays that role of like the, he plays good cop. He plays good cop well and he plays it mostly. And so when he, does bad cop i like have to keep myself from bursting out laughing because i'm like oh so you don't so like you don't have it all together and they did just get on your last nerve i get it i get it. well i mean as with anyone i right. mean uh you know uh, we've mentioned before james and i work together mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that get on our, our nerves yep. trust me a lot yeah and and i find i i try to remind myself that it is and sometimes I try to remind him, it's easier to play good cop when you've just come home and it's only like three, four hours tops that you're you're with them. Like it's harder to be it's hard for me to be good cop after ten hours. It's hard. It's a long day. It's a long day. It's a long day. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. So um but anyway, so he's good. I mean, he's good with good cop. He came, he came through with the um, big boy came with through. The, he came through with the popcorn and the chicken. I don't know if he actually bought ice cream, but I was like, I can't cook. I just don't have it. I don't have it in me tonight, and often I don't have it in me. 
<laughs> what the only time the only time that I succeed at cooking dinner is if I can get it done during nap time. And today Emery woke up from teething and so it threw off it threw off the whole nap time. So I was like, I don't we don't have any food. So it's go get it. So go get it. Go get it. Thanks. Box it up. Bring it in. Thanks. Good chicken. <laughs> it works. So, so yeah, so they're they're good. They're good and um and and at the end of the day, like especially so we'll just jump right in to to the show, the like meat meat and potatoes. I didn't cook tonight, so I'm thinking about real food. Mm. So <laughs> let's just jump right in. Like I recognize that what a privilege and a joy that these are my problems, right? Like that that I'm fighting with Lincoln on the porch over over water, like over spraying water at him by accident in his eye or like over Emery freaking out because he wants some more popcorn or whatever the little things are. Oh, I posted earlier that Emery came over. Emery came over to me. We were outside with the, I got these big bubble wands. So it's like a tray and these big bubble wands. And he goes, mama, bubbles, please. Oh, I I remember seeing this post. But he was so, I mean... He was so devastated over finishing all of the bubbles and it just in his voice, like it caught me off guard because I don't know what I was doing. And all of a sudden it just came into my my ears and it was so desperate for these bubbles. And I was just like, it's just bubbles and I have more bubbles and I'm right here to give him the bubbles. And there's so many kids right now who are like they're taking kids as young as eight months old mm-hmm. away from their parents. They they can't talk. Can you imagine like a fifteen month old, an eighteen month old, an Emery, a, a two year old crying, crying? They're hungry. Maybe they need a diaper change. Like these people are assholes. I don't imagine that they have Desitin and like Aquaphor and anything. These kids are in Texas and their lips are dry. They're not giving them lip balm and lotion and like fresh diapers every two hours. Like they just, I just know they're not doing that. The one thing that I did see though, is that for example, in that tent camp thing, I'm sorry, that's a concentration camp. Anyway, you slice it or dice it, it is. Uh, They had AC units blowing cold air into these tents. Okay. Um, So at least they were... At least they were relatively not, comfortable, and they maybe, were maybe because maybe it's over. There's you can be cold. Like I just well, at least they're not sweltering. It's it's it's. I would say for a little kid, it's probably easier to go to um have like a a like a febrile. You know, like if it's hot and it's a bunch of kids in a place, it's easier for kids to get sick from being in a hot place mm-hmm. than if you're huddled, huddled up in a cold place. But they could be over overblowing the ac like i've had to turn up or turn down the ac in my my bedroom because the kids are dressed for the heat but then i turn on the ac high and so their arms are freezing you know and i have to make sure that their lips don't turn blue because i'm trying to keep them comfortable but you still have to keep them at the right temperature yeah like uh, maybe they're okay, but my immediate reaction to that is not like oh thank god that they're no or like it's that they're doing something situation. good I mean, you know, when you think about... I don't trust them at all. You mentioned anywhere between eight months. To thir- these are babies and toddlers, babies right? Babies and toddlers. And, um, and okay. five-year-olds are still babies, and seven-year-olds are still, like, they're just... They're babies. Yes. They're babies. And the government literally put out a statement saying that, you know, the they were... They had confirmed that they had three new facilities for tender age children. Oh, my God. Tender age children. What in the I, world? I'm like... Oh my the, god! The I fact that they can come up with with language like that with a straight face and say it out in public—it just these I, are the these are the things that came out in the last two or three days that just infuriated me. I was beside myself. I, I just I was next to tears the other night when I read about a woman who just found out she's two months pregnant and her five year old was taken from her and has been gone for six weeks. She doesn't know where he is. And then it turns out he's been in Chicago. He's been in like now he's closer to her, but he does. She doesn't actually, she, he might actually be in Texas now, but the, the, I, I originally thought that when they were separating families, it was right in the same base, right? No. Adults, on the left and you've, children on the right, just like in a concentration camp. But 
you, they were but sending here, children no, all over I the see, place. I just saw the map. Uh, Michigan, mm-hmm. Virginia, New York. I, I just, I can't even, I was surprised though at first because it was like the government is spending money to ship these kids far away. But he, here's what I don't understand, right? The, the whole problem that, that arose, that, that caused this to begin with was the fact that they don't want these illegal Im- immigrants, as they call them, in our country. But you're willing to bring them in, lock their parents up, and keep over 2,500, 3,000 children who will now go into the foster system and right. eventually become naturalized citizens or or <laughs> the responsibility of, right. of America, right? right? That, if you that, don't want them here, turn them away. I don't know why you're prosecuting people at the border. And here's the thing. Bring them in, document them so that you can say that they've been here before if you see them again, and then send them right through the other door. There should be a revolving door if you're so upset about this stuff and send them home. Here's what pisses me off, right? For the past three, four administrations, Clinton, uh, Bush, uh, uh, Barack Obama, all of them had very, very strong reactions to immigration. They didn't want people coming or crossing the border, Mm -hmm. but they weren't separating families. Right, like, because they're saying, "Oh, well, what are we right. getting so upset about?" Obama did it too. Right, yeah, right, right. Obama did do it, and the Obama administration spent a lot a of time. Though with that, yeah, so and so did it. Uh, the first, what it's are you twelve? Like Obama and his administration did not separate families; they kept them together. Mm-hmm. They did not separate their family yeah. members, right? And I don't know a whole like all the details of it, and. It, I, I I don't know any of the details but of it. But here's the thing. I just think if if they're going to be and I don't and I'm not saying I think they should be sending people back through the other door, but if the alternative is this, then they should just turn them around and like they should just make cars reversed or people to reverse or just I just well, well here here's another another thing that a lot of people fail to mention anytime you know they're talking about the situation is that Most of them came here to seek asylum Mm -hmm. and they were told. And asylum is a real thing. Go to the gate Mm -hmm. and say, and seek asylum. Right, right. right. All of a sudden, they find themselves taken in, arrested, their children taken away. Mm -hmm. These weren't people that jumped an imaginary fence or that that, that swam over the Rio Grande. These are asylum seekers. And asylum is a real thing. (laughs) And they walked straight up to one of our entry ports. Mm hmm. And got arrested. They weren't illegally en- entering. They literally walked up to the port and said, I'm seeking asylum. Mm-hmm. And someone must have said, come in. And now you're... <laughs> and now once you're here, you're here illegally. They take right. your children away. They put you away. They lock you up. It is heartbreaking. It's horrendous. It is it truly is, heartbreaking. It is, a, it is a crime against humanity. It is a... Like it is a travesty. It is the kind of thing that I I was today. I was at home. It's my day off. Thursday is my day off. And I was at home in the backyard. We had to get a new washer and dryer because our wash, our dryer died. I got to tell you a funny story about that. And Emery is playing with Lincoln and Emery are playing with bubbles. And I mean, we're just like living our life. And I was feeling so guilty and so terrible like to even get a new dryer or to be happy or to like sit in the sun or be outside with my children like maybe I was in a shitty mood today because I could not I could not reconcile all of this stuff that's going on and I just I think we talked about this last week I cannot as a parent separate myself from other people's children like I kind of can in in sort of the the sort of funny petty oh my kid wouldn't do or let my kid do something like that like that kind of stuff is funny and you don't really mean it but this kind of stuff where you're talking about the well being and the like physical and mental well being of actual children real life people right now in this moment i just couldn't se- separate myself from it and i've i've just been so depressed the last couple of days let me tell you i lost it when i was watching the news and they showed a, uh, an audio clip they were they i were... refused to listen to it i was actually so mad <gasps> earlier when um what were you watching earlier the the guy um, with the glasses oh uh chris hayes chris hayes 
No, it's not Chris Hayes. No, no, no. Earlier, I was watching a video from Francis M. Maxwell, Mm -hmm. who's on um, Young Turks, I think is what he's on. And he played it. And I just moved back from the phone so I couldn't hear it as well, like as clearly as I could hear his voice before. But I refused to listen to it because those that that audio of children screaming and crying, I don't need that kind of shit on my brain. Well, the most chilling part, and, and this is where I broke down and I lost it, was when I was listening to the audio and you can hear the the five-year-old girl saying... I want to call my auntie. Mm. I know who my auntie is. Oh my God. I know her number by heart. I yeah. memorized it. Her number is, and she said the first three digits, and then they cut off the audio. Right, because they don't want, they don't. Why don't <sighs> you just let the, I would have been yeah. the first one. You know what? I yeah. just heard your niece. Because somebody someone... would have put that shit on Facebook, and what? that lady would have been found in five minutes. And my point, and it's like, so you have an They don't active, want it. They want it to be this way. This administration, listen, for all the laws that we have in our land and all the laws that we have in place to protect our borders, what they're doing is inhumane. It's inhumane. It is inhumane. It is uncalled for. And these It's unlawful. Children, I'm sure it's unlawful. I'm sure this this it's is a like, crime against humanity. It's, and it's, then, a, it's, it's the, um, it's, I, there's a UN law. <laughs> they just the u.s the announced un was like what are you all doing they, they literally just announced the same week that they were pulling out of the un um yeah the humane the humane council or the human rights the council. Human rights council i was like what well so so on that that sounds really bad it sounds like par for the course with them but apparently there's there's some more to be read into the 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 UN Human Rights Council because of the other countries who are involved who are all committing all kinds of crimes. Who are all going to sit around people. and say... Oh, you were talking... You- you're talking all <laughs> I'm this drooling, junk. I'm so mad. You were talking shit before, right? You had uh-huh. so much to talk about us when we were doing what we were doing, and but look now at look you at now. you now. And look at you now. Oh my God. Committing all these crimes oh against my humanity. God. Because this is exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. And to see, okay. And then his punk... His punk- yes. Daughter. Oh my God! They're gonna come, all of them, all of them, all of them. They're gonna come. I mean, they're gonna come for all of us because they're gonna have to come for all of us. But now, today, yesterday, when did he do the executive order? Was that today or yesterday? He signed it yesterday. Yesterday mm-hmm. that oh, now we're gonna keep families together. But of course, that's the only line they put out. But the actual order is like we're gonna keep families together until the adults get through their hearings or indefinitely. So now we can keep children with their parents indefinitely in jail. In jail. But here, but here's the funny part. So a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, again, we go back to Obama. The Obama administration did it, and so did George Bush's. And the, pro- the problem here is— Even Laura is, Bush was like, oh, don't, <coughs> don't include me in this shit. No. But the, the problem is that they weren't enforcing this whole take it literal, let's make you a criminal and take your child away. Right. right? right. It's not what they were doing. What this administration is doing is blaming this law on Democrats or the previous right. predecessor. Because they want Everything money for the wall or they want money for whatever it is That's that they another want. Thing. And then he, he comes out and punk. says, Jeff Sessions comes out and says, well, you know, if you just simply put out an immigration bill and pass it through Congress oh with God. enough money for a wall, Jeff Sessions you're holding is a demon. that man should literally just get he's sucked, sucked up into the, the earth, earth <laughs> right where he stands. <laughs> so, and then he, <laughs> and then he says, you should just give him the demon. damn wall and then all this will go away. And and so Trump then gets on, oh, and I hate that we're talking about him, but it's just so relevant and so important that people know that this is bullshit. Mm-hmm. It really is. And so he comes on TV and says, oh, you know, the, it, Democrats did it. It's a law that they passed. I can't do anything about but it. But now I'm going to save the day with this executive order. I'm I, keeping the kids together. Did you hear him talk about people's children like belongings? Yeah. He was like, well, if we if we ended zero tolerance right now, now, then people, people, a million people would flood the borders and they would just, they would hear that it's over and they would just gather their little belongings. I mean, I'm sad to say, what is that? What is, what is that? Yeah. You're calling people's children their little belongings? Not everybody has a gold fucking toilet like you do. In what your is wrong with you? Yeah, I can't. He's just, he's, he's a psychopath is what he is. Yes, he is. He's a psychopath. It's psychopath is the ones who do, or the sociopath. I don't know. There's a difference. But he's both. I think he's both of them, and he just doesn't. He can't. 
maybe he's has something. I don't even. I don't even want to. I don't even something... want to label him with something because I feel like it would be a disservice something... to people who have that. <laughs> There is literally something wrong there's with this man in the head. There's wrong with him. And there's also something wrong with every single person who voted for him. I agree. Even though he lost the popular vote, there's still a lot of people walking around here. And you see those those things on Facebook of all the... the and I mean, these people are keyboard thugs and people say all kinds of things. But still, they're, they're like, oh, we should take them as organ, organ donors. We should just like beat their they fingers. They have been emboldened. This yes. unnecessary, oh my God, language mm-hmm. that I have seen all over the place, not only on Facebook, but in other areas of social media, walking the streets. Mm-hmm. I mean, just people's behavior in general is his demeanor and his ability to just go out and be as nasty as he could has literally set a tone mm-hmm. for the country. Yeah, we were, we were talking about microaggressions now before. Ugh. Now it's just aggressive. Yeah, there, there, there's no there was people were racist and were like in hiding. And so aggressions were micro and you you just try to like you hide your racism, but you still let people know that you're racist. And then his daughter goes on Twitter, sends out a tweet. Oh, you know, I'm so thankful that my father um, made it all better. He signed this executive order and I want to thank him for not separating families. Well, let me give you some facts. First of all, you're not separating families going forward. But you, you don't know how you're going to put them 3, together. You people that you separated. <laughs> you don't know how, where they are, how to nope. get them back together. Not at all. And I will say this. The tweet actually said, um, you don't thank a kidnapper for returning a child. <laughs> and I hate her. It's so true. It's so true. I hate true. her. And Melania's punk ass. I just... So one of my friends was like... Whatever, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. Because, of course, the joke is that she's a hostage, right? And that she's trying to get out and she's sending, she's trying to leave breadcrumbs so people will come and save her. (laughs) But whatever (laughs) situation you're in, and I'm just like, this this thing with the jacket, the jacket that says, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You're going to show up to the shelter for the children with a jacket that says, I don't care? You're going to tell me you didn't see it because it's on your back? Talk about tone deaf. But we already knew she was tone deaf from when she didn't she show she go she went to like Hurricane Maria in in some fancy out, outfit and stilettos and while her husband like, threw like freaking bouncy towels, towels at everybody. Oh no, but God. you know here here's the other thing. So you know it, it's funny how she's an immigrant who immigrated here, overstayed mm-hmm. her her visa, mm-hmm. right? As by, a dad, she know she's nobody years. brain surgeon. As She's nobody's answer. teacher. I'm not going to call She's her a nobody- stripper. I'm not going to call her a whore or anything <laughs> like that. She was a dancer. Quotation marks. Air quotes. An escort. Uh, or whatever it was. She a found, companion. She found herself her anchor husband. Oh, my God. Married him mm-hmm. to be able to stay in the U.S. Brought, uh, chain linked or whatever they're calling. What is the term when you bring when you get citizenship and then you bring other people over? Oh yeah, like chain. Um, it's called chain migration. Yeah, something like, I don't. Chain link sounds well, funny too. Well, because you know her husband can buy half of New York City, right? Or, but so, so she got her her citizenship, and then she brought her parents over. Yeah, her parents are also not brain surgeons or teachers or anybody's anybody. Yeah. So here you go. You have this foreign woman who's now our first lady mm-hmm. who can't. You know, I, I'm not who, downing who hid from the White House and the public eye to course. save her own child. Yeah. To save her own child, like life and childhood and normalcy and all of those things she hid from being the first lady because she needed to protect her own child but you can't you can't see that that's what people are trying to do and here we are and you're gonna come come and say oh i'm here to find out how what how you think i can help no not even that she came i just want to see i want to see the the facilities no, she didn't even see say see the children. No, I want to see the I facility. Want to see the facility. I was like, "What the f- is wrong with you?" Someone wrote on Facebook. They were like, "Oh, maybe she's one of those illiterate immigrants <laughs> with the jacket." So well, she didn't know I, what it said. One thing I will tell you: that woman speaks five la- five languages. She's not stupid. She's not stupid. But I think that you she's know, she's willfully and woefully ignorant. What a lot of people need to understand is that. What's happening with this administration? And also, she's been here for a long time, and her yeah. English is not good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's fluent enough for her to get a point across. Yes, of When course. she's not copying from Michelle Obama, of course. Of course. <laughs> but, um, you know, what a lot of people need to understand is that Donald Trump 
and his goons, right? And swamp people, I call them, because oh that's what they are. That's what they uh, are. They're not stupid. And they're, they're not stupid. They're doing all of this chaos on purpose. And they, they're they running a playbook that we have seen like decades in and out and centuries in and out. It's the same it's the same playbook that all of these dictators, dictators and, and mass murderers, like it's, it's the actual playbook. Yeah. And the fact that we get all, I, someone said people are saying that uh, bad times are near, like it's the times are, the bad times are coming. And she's like, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a historian. I'm a history teacher. Bad times are already here. We're are the the time of the bad times were coming were six months ago when he was doing some little things putting things into into play those are the things that made today possible yeah. a lot of people who don't realize that for example back in the 40s during world war ii this is how hitler did it mm-hmm. right hitler and his goons this is how he did it and if you make want, you afraid of people, make yeah. you afraid, make you make you angry, then make you afraid, then treat them like animals, like they're subhuman, then round them up, then start killing them. And the thing is, can you imagine if you want to know, know what, what it I felt like, what it was like for someone to actually take over a country and purge people? Mm-hmm. We're looking at it. Mm-hmm. This is how it mm-hmm. starts. Yeah, and you know they're not stupid. All these stupid comments that they go on tv and say and you know laura kellyanne Ingr- conway with laura her Ingram's alternative facts ass. laura ingram is the scum of the bottom of mm-hmm. the oh my god i can't even look at her as a person as a woman as a just like she's just taking up valuable airspace like actual molecule oxygen molecules that should just be going to trees and shit like she shouldn't be allowed this bitch called the shit a summer camp she called it summer camp oh kids are basically just going to summer camp no it's not summer camp not when you did you go to summer camp at eight months no i never been to summer camp at eight months well the summer camp that i went to would allow me to see my parents Mm -hmm. as soon as my day was done I got off the bus and, and I went to was church camp. There. I went to sleepaway camp for two weeks. And even I knew where my mother was, when she was coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The letters came in the mail. The phone calls happened. The whole situation is just really hard, like heartbreaking to me. And, and, <sighs> and, and what's her name? The, the Maccabee. Huckabee is Sarah another, can't fuckably Sarah, stand her. And I don't know. I don't. I probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Chris calls her. On our show. I mean, I'm a woman, and I know that we should be able to. I, I don't. I don't know all the all the she all the words. Didn't answer but the question. I am looking at her, woman to fucking woman, and this is when I I often feel like I'm still a kid. I always often feel like I look like the kids. I don't. I'm a grown ass woman, right? Woman to fucking woman. How are you out here? in these streets saying this bullshit defending it defending it going home does this woman even have children yes going home to your children there was a reporter that sat in that press briefing room in the white house and said to her you are a mother how can you defend this and she refused to answer Answer. the question he repeated it nine times and she kept ignoring him and pointing to another reporter you go you're done you go and he would just keep repeating it. You're a mother. That's the How only you- way you can do it, right? It's the only way you is if you shut off I, and you're like, I'm at work. I'm at work and I'm doing my job. There's and no then you sound like off. a fucking Nazi. There's no shutting that off. I'm sorry. The, the emotion that you feel. In, no, but for crazy people, crazy people, psychopaths can shut off humanity. Yeah, but, but, but in my Oh my God, it sounds the like mother's... the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> Have you ever seen that yeah. show? I just, I just shut off my, I, I flipped the I switch. Love I flipped the switch of my humanity. Poor Niklaus. <laughs> you know, you, you think that Niklaus was like this evil man until mm-hmm. you really learned the backstory. Yeah, no, I'm watching it. The, the original originals is in oh. its last, this last season right now. So good. Anyway, wow. I mean, you have to have these moments of levity. But literally, she's like a friggin' vampire. She f- switches off her humanity. Yeah. And then you're going to have to, you're basically going to have to dangle her own kid in front of her in order for the switch to come back. Yeah. And- Laura Ingram, you're going to have to push her in front of a friggin' car. Push her child in front of no, oncoming traffic I think that I would, for her humanity to switch back on. I think that on. I would just push her directly into a herd of I don't think Laura Ingram has any humanity. No, I would just push her into a herd <laughs> of walkers. <laughs> D- just go. There you go. You know? Oh my god! Um, and it's and like, let them devour her, not turn her, just like that to the bone. Devour. Kelly Ann 
Conway. I don't even know about her. I don't know. Isn't she dead already? I mean, she's like a walking corpse. <laughs> she's like a gremlin. Swallow her. She's the one that said that someone used alternative facts. Yeah, I almost yeah, lost yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But you know, but it, we have a new con- a new coin term for the. It's like a new term we can all use. Yeah. Uh, oh. So thanks, yeah. Kellyanne. Yeah, it's uh, it's alternative facts. You know, when oh they come God. at me at work, oh, you you were late. I was like, no, no, no. That's alternative facts. You know? <laughs> In the my way version, I see it, I was you early. all were early. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, in all seriousness, you have to laugh, or else you'll just be crying, 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 crying. And 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 also, I mean, speaking as a person who who doesn't like, I don't protest. I'm also a keyboard thug. I'm a podcast thug. I say everything that I want to here in the safety of this this basement the safety of my house like i get really angry about stuff but i am not i am not willing to take i i don't have child i don't have my own child care i'm not willing to take my kids out into a protest and like protest i get it the 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 it's hard it's hard to know what to do and how to fix something that feels insurmountable and and but and it's devastating and it's defeatist thinking. And I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do except to come here and say, fuck. <laughs> like, and that's loud. Oh but, you know, and you make a great point. Not everybody can go out there and protest and be vocal in that way. But you can help in so many ways. Right. You know, there's a lot so you of can organizations. Give to the, the, their fundraising right now. That's started correct. as It started as a fundraiser for $1,500. For one person. For one person. It's up to $16 million. Yes. Holy shit! And that initiative, and that, in itself that's can RAICES, help. right? R A I R A I C E S dot org is probably mm-hmm. what it is. And you can find it anywhere on Facebook. Know, Just open it up. There were four mothers who went into. I'll a post it on our office. Facebook page. Three of them got in and barricaded themselves in his office. Whose office? I can't remember the senator's oh, in the name. Centers. Okay, but um, they are demanding that he remember that what they're doing is horrible and one of the mothers ended up getting arrested in the lobby the other three made it into the office and barricaded themselves in there and um, they can't get them out huh? knowing that they were going to get arrested oh. and so they started a facebook live video and they started talking oh. about why they were doing they were like listen i'm a white woman i have nothing to give other than to sit in here and be disobedient yeah and talk about the fact that this is just atrocious use my privilege of being able to be yes. disobedient and not get shot Oh my and God. She, thank you thank you white lady but she literally says she goes because i know at the end of the day when i get arrested it's I not gonna change my life <laughs> i have the means <laughs> right. to get back to my children relatively quickly, quickly. and these women don't oh this is why God. i'm doing this oh my God. and i thought that's very selfless number one mm-hmm. and very powerful mm-hmm. because she recognized that she had her white privilege mm-hmm. she recognized the fact that she could get arrested right now and 24 hours later she'd be in be her, home the arms yep. with her children yep and these women and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fight her for that oh my god that's a, that's amazing i was just like wow. i'm not gonna give her more than the other women but still shout out to her no i mean any little bit counts and right. these these are the types of things that people need to see mm-hmm. and um so if you can't be vocal like that or be willing to go to jail even if it's for two hours or three hours or 24 give to some of these organizations yeah. that are providing free um counsel counsel for legal services legal services to all these uh, immigrants especially that- now so they're they're saying they're not going to separate families anymore <laughs> but there's still 2000 3000 families who have already been separated Correct. with no trail of where so parents are in one place and kids are in the other place and they don't know where they are what i saw today that also solidified that i was going to talk about this tonight i mean and i can't the air the airplane the air companies the, the plane companies. Mm-hmm. air com- what are they called flight companies i don't know i don't have a airlines. word from airlines the airlines are coming out one after the other who are like listen don't be using our planes to transport these children across the country away from their families them. we don't want and we have our own problems is basically what i read between the lines we have our own problems and we don't want to get involved in the even shit. the flight attendants are holy like, cow I will, not service, I will not service routes that participate mm-hmm. in removing children holy from their parents. cow so i was so like great. i was i was happy about it even knowing that southwest united delta they have their own issues with mm-hmm. um 
with having people of color on their on their flights but you know one or two points to them for recognizing this and also again recognizing the the little bit of power that they have in the platform that they mm-hmm. have to be able to say this i was very aware of the word choice that was like we hope the government will not use our planes for this which is kind of what I'm guessing is that it's hard for them to know. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know when they're, when they're transporting these children, do they put, you know, Sergeant John Smith's name on it and his, he's and coming his with 12, his companion yeah. coming with 25 kids, like 25 little Brown kids. Um, I don't know that the airline has a way of seeing immediately when, when these bookings are happening, <laughs> but <laughs> I just keep thinking what they they would use as a, as an alias for right. these kids, or the fact that the government would be making like trying to get around this. You know, oh, I'm an adult traveling with 25 children, or we have six adults traveling with 12 kids each. Like whatever. We're going to summer camp. We're going. <laughs> you know. Well, you don't have to say where where you just have to you know you just have your destinations, but you also have like. I have to travel. So here's the thing. Whenever James and I travel with our two kids, we bring their birth certificates. And they have no documents. They have no documents. No. They have an order. But none of government. my white friends ever have to bring their their documents with them for their their white kids. None of my friends have ever. They've because I've said it, they've taken it and they've never been asked for it. And so it's a running joke. It's like, oh well we know why. Every single time we travel, wow. we have, because they say on the phone, they say on the phone, if you're traveling with children, you should bring their, their, um, birth certificate. And my white friends have never been asked for it. And we are asked like three different times at the security, at the gate, at the, like at the building before you even get into the airport. Like when you put your, your, um, your luggage in through the check-in before you even enter the, they want to see it there. They ask for it at security and they ask for it again at the gate before we get on the plane. That's some bullshit. Every single time they don't have, I mean, we're, and, and we are flying domestically. I haven't taken them to God. I haven't taken them anywhere. We are, def- we're flying to San Francisco. <laughs> to you don't Los have to Angeles show it to them until you are showing them their plane ticket. That's it. Right. But they have asked us for it every single time. Right. And so what I'm, I say that to say when, when Sergeant so and so or ICE agent so and so shows up with 12 kids, are they showing up with? No. Pat, they're no, they have an order. No. no. <laughs> like, what? Listen, they're being walked through the back. Uh-huh. These kids are not going to. They're probably sp- going off the tarmac. <laughs> yeah, seriously. They're not going to walk through an airport. That's so not true. Can you imagine being no. in an airport and seeing ICE walking through with 25 kids? I would literally bun rush that man to the floor and say, run. Oh, my God. You know, like, did you ever see? Uh, I would I, like and, to say that I would do it, but I would just be crying. So, okay. I'm not making fun of the situation, but there's these videos, a series of videos on Facebook where this guy dresses up as a as a as an Arab and he puts on a whole garb with a did little... Did you say Arab? Like you're in well, I, I don't want to say Muslim. I don't want to say because I don't know what, what he is. You also don't know that he's so Arab? He could be Middle Eastern. He could right? be Middle okay. Eastern. So, and he has a book bag. And he just walks up to people and throws it in the area, and then he just starts running. Oh my god! So and then the video is goes. Is he white? I think he is. Of course. So then he Go throws ahead. it in, there and then the video says, "Run!" Oh right. My so god. that that would be me, and like I would like literally walk by the ice agent, <laughs> tackle him, and I'd just be like, "Run!" Oh my god! And then the kids just scatter, scatter all over the place, <laughs> oh right? It's like a, but, it's like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> but in in, re, in all reality, it's just very very. Um, sad. I mean, you have to you have to find ways to laugh to keep from crying yeah, all the time. It's, it's heartbreaking, and and so not only did the airlines uh, decide that they wanted no no take in this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which you can read into whatever, read into it whatever you want, but um, that was good on their part that they came out at least and said we want nothing to do yeah. with this. But certain governors. Oh Certain yes, they're states. taking the the troops. The, they're removing all of their national the guard national guard. I saw that yesterday. From the border or refusing to, to answer send the them. Call. Yeah, New Hampshire. We were coming to we were coming to to like stop criminals and stuff. We're not about yeah. taking yeah. kids from people. Yep, New Hampshire, Connecticut, New Jersey, Massachusetts. Colorado, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. A Republican, Virginia, Virginia. Virginia. 
Maryland, um, Baltimore. I mean, where's Baltimore? Delaware. Delaware. Yep. All of these no, states Maryland. announced that they would refuse the call to send National Guard it's members impressive. to remove. And that's governors. Yeah. <clears throat> and I thought that was very powerful yeah. because it just tells you, it just shows you that. We're doing um, what we can, right? Like, we have to. He's the president. And uh, there are. Actually, I take that back because there are still things that can be done. There's still like um, the joke about this fucking space to Mars bullshit that he's trying to do. <laughs> you, you're the president, but you're not the czar. You're not like we don't have a dictator. Congress has to do these things. There's still plenty of things that he thinks he can do. Well, here's the thing. He's the friggin' douche who got the job who thinks that all of a sudden he can just... Do say things and and things happen because you legit don't even know how shit works but don't don't knock him though because he's working he, it he's working he's working these republicans for mm-hmm. dear life oh my god and i'm like you know and he, like paul ryan for example oh my god when donald was running all he was like oh my god this man's a demon he cannot be president blah 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 he i slid right into line like the douche that he is as soon as he won that election oh shit i'm just gonna have to swallow my pride oh be my the god. speaker of the house and do what i gotta do and now then he said he was resigning and now but he's here, still there it would <laughs> well he's resigning he's not running for re-election okay so come november Whatever there would be a, a new demon. speaker but i just heard a rumor that he might be running again yeah because people say what they want to like jay-z is so, always retiring he ain't retired like yeah. uh, just sorry let me take that back i'm gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put him anywhere near these people it's not fair no but can but we talk about are... the beehive oh just a little bit in the release of their collaborative I know. can i just say album? that i didn't listen to it okay neither uh, have i oh okay but it's it's a thing i don't feel bad right it, it's out there and when <clears throat> beyonce and, and jay-z release something it's it's a big it's a big deal yeah yeah, so um, I don't want to drag him into. I'm not going to make any comparisons of him to these no, not at monsters. All. They're just disgusting, and n- none of the news. Like I try to turn off the news, and even I'm on social media all the time. I have so many things I'm supposed to be promoting, and 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 shit. And and the last couple of days, I've just I've just tried really hard not to look because I am so sensitive. I'm so sensitive. I cry I in commercials. Too. I cry. I I just watched Coco and I was crying. I mean, I just <laughs> my girl Rachel. You know, I watch Rachel Maddow all the time. Oh my god! Oh, I didn't Two see her. She was break. Oh, she cried, she right? literally right before signing off when they gave her the breaking news that said that they had these three facilities for tender age right. children. She was like, I can't. I can't. I can't, and she just started crying, and she just literally looked at her producer. Do you have the the screen? You have everything you need? I gotta go. Do you have it so that people can read it for themselves, because I can't read this? And she goes, you have it? Good. Nope. You don't have it? Well, and then she tried reading it again, and then she was like, I can't do this anymore. That's our show for tonight. Thank you so much. Here's the last word Mm -hmm. with Lawrence O'Donnell, and move on. And she was just shaking her head and crying. I was just like, I lost it. Yeah. Because when someone who's a professional... Right, can't can't keep it together... (laughs) You know it's bad. And it's bad. It's pretty bad. And then I just read, so so again, it's a playbook, right? It's a playbook of steps that they take that seem innocuous, seem simple, like neither here nor there. And they get worse and worse and worse. And so now the, the newest thing, maybe not the newest because I'm talking about yesterday, is that they're, they're now trying to go after naturalized citizens. They're they're saying that there's so many people. He, his number's always millions, millions of naturalized citizens who became that way by lying on their application or lying in some way, or they're like somehow they they lied through the process and they're like trying to right <laughs> like his wife, like his in laws, like yeah. his first wife, like any of his wives, right? <laughs> like, so now they're going after naturalized citizens. It's not enough to get people who are at the border asking for help. Now it's people who've been here. I mean, they already deported people. All those people who are, I mean, there's still people seeking sanctuary. There was a lot of people here from and, Haiti, for example. Right. That all of a sudden lost their um, their permission to be in this country because he decided, no, nope, don't want him anymore. Don't want him. You know? They deported people who've been here. They've deported people who've been here, so, like, who never were in their other place. Like, were children when they left. I mean, dreamers. And you've got other people who came, maybe they were a little bit older, but they've been here 40, 50 years. They don't know. I, I can't even imagine... 
I can't even imagine that you've you've been here since even you were 15, right? Or like a dreamer, you've been here since you were a baby and now you're 25 years old and they're like, oh, dude, you're Mexican. We're sending you back to Mexico. And they drop you off in the middle of Tijuana. Tijuana. Yeah. What do you <laughs> you're do? like, first of all, my Spanish accent is shit because I live in the Bronx and I don't have an accent. I don't, I don't know anything about this place. Mm-hmm. You just get dropped off somewhere and you're supposed, oh, because you look like them, you're supposed to be one of them, even though you're from a country that's made up of a bunch of people who all look different, who are all seeking asylum from somewhere else. And it was okay before, like, it's okay for a certain type of asylum seeker, mm-hmm. but well, it's not okay for everybody. Everybody, you know, when it was right. discovered. And they were all, got asylum, <laughs> asylum they were all seekers. asylum seekers. They all came here to, to escape persecution from re- religion and, and then, God knows what And then massacred the people who were here. How do you all go from running for people. your life to killing other people? Yeah. I just... And then th- 250 <laughs> years later talk about oh uh, you know we don't want immigrants here I was like bitch your whole family and everyone that came before us was an immigrant right and mm-hmm. those are the same people who are like oh but i'm really irish <laughs> it's like how are you so american but also so irish yeah and you hate immigrants and oh black people are always so <laughs> so sensitive but people were so mean to irish people before like it's how are you same. How do those things come out of your mouth and it's, you don't choke it's and die on them? Ignorance. <laughs> Just ignorance. You know, I wish, like, you know how your mouth gets juicy when you start talking? And I you wish get they cr- would. <laughs> I wish their mouth gets so juicy that they literally drown in their, like. It's a natural, it's what it is, it's a natural way of saying shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> is it juicy enough? <laughs> oh. I can't. No. Stop but. talking right now. So there are just so many, and I, I. So here, when they're going after naturalized citizens, I'm like, oh shit. So here's the thing: when things really start to hit home, and you're like, okay, well, I, I am not. I don't know any people. My kids are fine. Everybody's kids I know are fine. You sort of dis distance yourself from what's going on, and then you're like, oh shit, they're going after naturalized citizen. Oh my god, everybody I know is a naturalized citizen. All of a sudden, it's like right up in your face, and you're like, oh my god, what? What now? But, you know what I mean? But when you say naturalized citizen, meaning someone who came here, took the test, passed, became a citizen. Yes. You're a citizen. Right. But the whole point of this new task force, because this dude loves task force, is that, oh, all it's like the voter fraud. Like right? space like, balls. Like space balls. It's like, oh, That's there's so be many the name people. Of the task force. <laughs> space balls. No, it's going to be a task force for, for people who are really interested in looking at things but don't really understand anything and can't really read good. Yeah. Remember that from Zoolander? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so naturalized citizens came here properly and did, did all the time they were supposed to do and took all the tests and blah, 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 and became citizens. And he's asserting that people lied on their whatever. And I wouldn't be surprised if he would say that it happened during the eight years that Barack Obama was president. Right, of course. Because, you know, anything that he's doing at this point is literally trying to erase the legacy of a man that was just amazing. And all we do is remind him that, dude, one, it's not the same, and two, you're just never going to be cool. Never, ever. Nobody's ever going to like you. No one's ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, <it's> just, <laughs> I have I have liked, like, I liked Clinton a little bit. I found a really soft spot for Bush Jr., especially after after Trump. Bush is a saint. Oh, it's true. I'm sorry. It's true. It's so, all about. <laughs> even, even, like personally right because i've always loved laura i thought laura bush was very very nice um (laughs) okay but i found a new appreciation for george w bush's ignorance Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. after trump but there has never been ever aside from i think john f kennedy a president that has had the swagger Mm. that barack obama brought to the table that i don't even think jfk can (laughs) Stand up to the uh, Barack no, swag. But, no, but you know, it's like, you know, that man had a swagger in him that was just a swag. Ah, uh, <laughs> he just mm. every time he walked. And I then was when like, he sang, remember when he's singing? Oh, he just can't. No, 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 no. He he sang like yeah. Al Green. No, he but he did sing uh, Amazing Grace, and then he sang that too. People lost it. People oh, just lost just like, it. Yes. <laughs> you know, they were amazing. 
But yeah, I so miss, I miss. You're never gonna be cool. Nobody's no. ever gonna remember this time no. in history in the timeline as a good one. No. Um, we all hope you die. I mean, <laughs> like you're not. I don't wish death on anybody, but you're one of but them. But I do. Yeah. And I hope you, I hope you choke on all those burgers that you eat. Oh my god! Because he <laughs> eats a lot of burgers. He's a ca- he's a he's a car- he's a cartoon character. Yeah. How are you gonna be afraid of burgers and people? Like, how are those two things that are the same? You know what is wrong with you? I hope that when you go, you ch- you you go choking on a burrito. Oh my god! <laughs> that would be like the ah. Uh, but there's still people. Wasn't it the um somebody somebody was out saying something and then went said they were going out for Mexican food later. The the secretary uh, of the some... secretary of her uh, whatever. <laughs> no, she literally was at the restaurant and literally ha- hecklers came in and started screaming and saying, oh "How appropriate! You're taking all these kids away. Yet you're eating Mexican mm-hmm. food." She literally left the restaurant. She should. I mean, well, that's where you're supposed to. I guess that's a good thing, right? It's you an finally thing. realize that you're a piece of shit. Like I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you were blind to it before, but. There's no being blind to this shit. This shit is being done on purpose. It is. It is. Yeah. This is okay. So you know, you, you, obviously, we know that the the Mueller investigation is still real, right? And mm-hmm. we haven't heard much about it in the last week. This is exactly what this was meant to do: mm-hmm. is to distract. 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 And he's so good at it. He's so good at it. No. Oh my god! And I and I and Melania is playing along that jacket thing with the i don't care thing that was on purpose. all on purpose it's all on purpose and and you can't help but see it and fall for it and you, i guess we just have to remember to pivot to keep you got to be like like when it's time to cross the street you got to look both ways both mm-hmm. times you just have to like look so you see look back so you check what's going on we just have to be so vigilant all and when you're halfway there the look again look again just in case because it's not safe and it's not safe it's not safe for any of us and i say that like as a black person we've known it hasn't been safe for a long time i feel like regular old white people need to realize that it's also not safe for you all when a crazy person is in charge like Mm -hmm. like yes it feels like he's just going after brown immigrants right now but the pivot is so fast it's so fast with him to me it's like like I feel like it's weird, but it's very lethargic in a way. But I feel like in another six months, like the movie The Purge might come to reality. Oh my god! Like people will be running around and trying to like purge out the. I just the, don't even know. I don't have a game plan. Uh, I feel like I need I need to become a doomsday planner and plan for this shit because I just I like don't even know what I would do. I don't know how I would get out of here. I don't know where I would go. And this is the uh, this is the kind of thing. And I'm probably being a little broad with that because there are probably a few places that I could go. But this is this is what people say when when bad things happen, like um, uh, in Puerto Rico or in New Orleans or whatever, and, and and people stay. You know, you know something bad is coming, and you're like, I don't have anywhere to go. The assumption is everybody has somewhere that they can go to escape, and the reality is that. Not everybody does, and we don't all. And and where the heck would <laughs> like? I feel like we need some escape money, some cash escape money, so that we can get on a plane and go somewhere, on a train and go somewhere. And I don't know where that place would be, and and I hate that I have to think about that. And I and I hate and I think that we all should think about that. And I don't know, I don't I don't know what it means, and I don't know what to do. But I feel like we should all maybe mom so hard tip this week should be like Have figure out your fucking escape plan. Mm-hmm. Like seriously. <laughs> like seriously, not like a joking comical doomsday planner with with cans of beans in your in your basement or whatever. I live in a city, like there's no hiding in my basement. But a, a city burbia. But like, what is the actual escape plan? How do we get away from this? And where are the place? Where the, where do we think we can go? Well, whatever you if, do, don't go to Middle America. That's Trump country, right? You know, it's like no. Th- this I'm this going is, to Canada. This is all I'm our sorry. coast. This is all the coastal cities <laughs> trying to get somewhere. I'm going to Canada. I just, I, but but that's that looks like. The Walking Dead. Everybody's on the highway going up, trying to get to Canada, and we can't all I make steal it. A boat. 
I'll steal a boat. I'll end up in Newfoundland somewhere. <laughs> I'll end up in Vancouver or no, Vancouver's on the on the west side. I'll end up in in some anyway, like St. What's what what's at I the end know. of the St. Lawrence River? I don't know where um, that is. British Columbia? No. Oh God. <sighs> One of those. Ann so Arbor, you're gonna gonna so. go in a boat? Oh, I will find a boat because there's no one in my way but yeah. the waves. I, do, I just and I can fish, so I'll take a, a little fish pole, mm, okay, and you know a little hibachi grill at the end of the boat and grill if I have to. And when I get to Canada, I'll be like, <gasps> I'm a refugee. What we need is like a calling tree, <laughs> like we need like a text group or a something because I feel like the only way you survive is if you're able to get out the day before. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you have to be, this is what I'm I'm saying about paying attention to whatever's going on. And I feel like this is taking a little bit of a comical turn, but, uh, but, but there's, there's always truth, truth in comedy. <laughs> there's always truth in comedy. We just all have to be ready and, and watching to see when the tide is going to turn. Cause you don't want to be here when everybody's trying to get on the plane. I'm, I'm thinking about the Z movie with Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what it's called. Something Z, Citizen Z, or something Z. War Z, Z War. War Z. Something like that. Something like that. But everybody's trying to get on the same plane, so Mm -hmm. the plane crashes. Like, I don't want to do that. I would like to leave the day before. (laughs) Yeah, you know. People don't even know. And, like, go to Ghana. (laughs) It'll be safe in Ghana. (laughs) Just just go somewhere. And then stay for a couple weeks. and, And then maybe you've gotten out ahead of time i don't know it's just it's really it it is so heavy and and weighty and weighty for me in a way that like i was really i'm still upset and you know black lives matter is still a thing and it's still you know um colin kaepernick is still a thing people are still cops are still killing black people but and i and i can't divorce myself from that and even though i am not an immigrant seeking asylum, I still can't divorce myself from that either. But I guess because of this like parent and child thing, I just feel so, so wrecked by it that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with myself. And I I felt wrecked. I I, I guess it's equal. I, I guess you can't pit these two things against each other because I have big black sons and I'm worried to shit about them as well. And so I don't want to make one seem. I mean, that's the whole point of my friend said, I feel like all my, my, all all my intersections are being attacked. And I also feel like all my intersections are being attacked at once. And, um, and I, I feel it like I, my immigrant intersection, (laughs) my person of color, my black, my parent, my motherhood, my like children, it's all being attacked all at the same point and I just don't know what to do and I and I only come out here to say in this moment (laughs) that real talk none of us know what to do and Mm -hmm. and and the defeatist attitude is not going to help us and so I don't want to promote that so if anybody out there knows something that can be done and you want to sort of like rope me in rope our listeners in i'm gonna post the link for the the fundraiser for isis Mm -hmm. on our facebook page at breezy mom podcast on facebook and so if you haven't already please consider donating to that that fundraiser i know just something i would say donate uh, the the benefit is of that is it's a very small thing that you can do but it's a a um it's, it's a, a significant it's a thing. significant thing. Like it's small for you at the moment, but it's significant for the people that it's going to help and for the cause and for the cause. And then I guess just keep an eye out and see how else I think I'm going to try and go. I've, I've never gone. I don't think I've ever gone to a protest, like an actual protest. I really don't think I've ever gone. And I'm, I'm likely going to the, uh, keep families together. I don't know what it's actually called. There's going to be one in white plains on the, 30th i think it's saturday and i think i'm gonna go to that so there are a bunch of them there's one plan i don't i didn't hear that it was canceled just because like douchebag said with his new executive order well, no, because but it's still it's the big one is happening in dc and then there are all these satellite things happening in 130 cities across the country mm-hmm. so 
there are places I'll also link that on our on our Facebook page um, where you can just kind of put in your zip your zip code and see if there's one happening in your area. And one of the other things too that you can do, one of the most profound uh, rights that we have in this mm-hmm. country. Call your congressman. Well, you can call your congressman, you can call your your senator in your state and let them know how you feel and express that this is just unacceptable. But one of the most important things that you can do is go on your local state registration for voting, their website, and make sure that you're registered. Mm -hmm. Talk to your county clerk. Make sure that you're registered. Make sure Mm -hmm. that you're on those books. And that you know when the voting, the elections are happening. When they're happening, who's on the ballot. Learn about your candidates. Know who you're putting in office. And show up on election day. Yeah. And encourage other people to do that and take your elderly family members to exercise their right. This is a right that we've had since birth for most of us here in this country. Let's use it because that's a very, very powerful tool to get someone like that that's in our office right now Mm -hmm. out of there. Yeah. Although let's, check with your elderly people, make sure they're going to vote the right way. Yeah, uh, you know, let's <laughs> let's make it a one-term president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't even. I don't even want to think about it because I'm I'm already convinced that he's going to be elected again, and it just makes me throw up in my mouth. So, so I hope that's not the case. Anyway, so what did we say? Uh, oh, mom, so hard tip this week was get a plan in place. Mm-hmm. For how we're going to an exit strategy for how we're going to save ourselves from this bullshit that's going on, because even if you're not an immigrant, even if you're not the ch- I mean, the child of an immigrant, what would I do if my mother was gone? They came and like round up my family members like just because I am a citizen doesn't mean that I am not touched by all of this or hurt or impacted or hurt Mm -hmm. or impacted by and so just because you are a citizen doesn't mean that the people around you are not are not impacted by this by this because it's a whole it's a country of of immigrants like the Mm -hmm. whole country is basically one or two generations away from being immigrants so so don't don't rely on the fact that you feel safe in this because if we're all not safe, then we're not all, you know, if everyone isn't safe, we're not all safe. Mm -hmm. And the tide turns so quickly with these people. They're so, again, I don't want to use any of these terms to belittle the people who are afflicted with actual issues because these people are just monsters. So take care of the people around you, reach out to the people around you in a way that's helpful to them, especially if you know of certain people who are directly afflicted by any of these, um, these intersections and be, be supportive to them and not, and not a, um, and, and not a source of fear for them because I'm sure that there are people in your life um, who work for you, work with you, live next door to you, walk around you, <laughs> go to school with your kids. Like I'm sure that this shit is affecting a lot of people around you and people are suffering in some cases really silently. So uh, I I am going to put on my big girl pants and try to be better about um about being supportive of of my community because this is this is my community. So on that note, on that really heavy note, thanks for sticking it out with us tonight for this really heavy, uh, otherwise heavy episode that I it thought needed to happen. that I thought I didn't want to do, but I really needed to. And I'm not your I'm I'm not your um what are they called? Um pundits or political to, this is not this is not what I do. I don't know any of those stats and all of those kinds of things. I see them, but they they go in and out of one ear for me. Um, so I'm just I'm just talking about it as a real person and how this sort of this makes me feel emotionally. And and so if that is you, um, thanks so much for sticking around, and we'll see you next week. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at breezymomspodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.